So we have been working on factoring polynomials. In the last video, we talked about trinomials, and we did a few examples of those. Those were some simpler examples. In this video, we're going to start with trinomials again, but they're going to be more complicated examples. So let's go ahead and see these examples here, examples 3 and 4, because in the last video, we started with examples 1 and 2. I suggest that you pause the video to see if you can factor these trinomials on your own. So let's start with example three. There's a couple of things going on here that we need to talk about before we even get to the trinomial part of this problem. First of all, this is a polynomial, but it's not in its proper order. It's not in the descending order we like it to be in. So before we do any factoring of any kind, we should always put our polynomials in descending order. So that changes it to 12a cubed minus 14a squared minus 20a. Okay, so now that we have it in descending order, you might think that you can jump right into the trinomial part of this. But remember that the first technique that I taught you is common factor, and we should always look for that first. Well, that applies here, even though that this is a trinomial overall. Common factor always comes first. So if I look throughout all three terms, I have a common factor of 2 and a. So if I factor out a 2a, that gives me 6a squared minus 7a minus 10. Now, if I look at the inside of my parentheses, I still notice that I have a trinomial. And now I finally get to factor this trinomial in the sense that we hope to do it in. I have three terms with no more common factors left over. So I set up my two sets of parentheses to factor it. But before I do that, do not forget this common factor out here. He is just as important at the end of the problem as he was at the beginning of the problem. So let's set this up here. My first term is 6a squared. So I need to come up with factors to multiply to give me my 6 and a squared. a times a is pretty obvious, but what is going to give me 6? I actually have two choices here. I can multiply 1 times 6, or I can multiply 2 times 3. And I told you this was a bit of a guess and check problem. The suggestion that I have for you is always start with the numbers that are closest together. Now, it's not always going to work out that way, but it has a tendency to work out with those numbers more than any other numbers that we can think of. So I'm going to try and start with a 2 and 3 here. If I don't get it to work out, just note that we can always come back to the 1 times 6. Okay, now let's move on to my last of 10. And again, I want to come up with factors to give me that 10 there. So I can do 1 times 10, or I can do 2 times 5. So again, my suggestion to you is to start with the numbers that are closest together, 2 times 5. So let me go ahead and put them in my last places. Now, typically at this point, I suggest that you do your outside and your inside to see if you can get the correct middle term of negative 7a. But I actually don't have to do that here because I am violating another rule. If we look back to this set of parentheses here, if we pulled out all of our common factors from that set of parentheses here, then we should not have any common factors in either one of those parentheses down there. And I do. I have the common factors in the first set of parentheses. So that violates the rule. No common factors here tells me there should be no common factors there. So I don't even have to do my outside and inside of this FOIL process because I know this is automatically not going to work out. Now, there's going to be a lot of guessing and checking here. So instead of erasing this and trying again, my suggestion to you is to cross it out and start over. That's because you're going to get to a point where you can't remember what you have and haven't tried, and you're going to keep trying the same things over and over again. 
Well, if you have them right there on your paper, then you don't have to wonder if you've already tried it or not. It's there for you to see. So let me start over. Don't forget your common factor out front. I like to keep something the same. So I like to keep my first things the same, my 2a times 3a. And I like to switch my back terms. Now, it doesn't always work out that way, but that's just the pattern that I tend to follow. So let me switch my 5 and my 2. Now, if I multiply my outside, that gives me a 4a, and my inside gives me a 15a. And I want to try and add and subtract these to get my middle term here of negative 7a. If I add them, it gives me 19. If I subtract them, it gives me 11. So this tells me that I have the incorrect answer, which means I have to try again. So again, keeping my first two things the same and trying something else. I tried 2 and 5 with a combination of my 2 and 3 up front. So let me look at the next thing of 1 times 10. Now, I know that I can't put my 10 here because that violates the common factor rule. So my only choice to put there is a 1 there, which means my 10 goes over here. My outside gives me 20a and my inside gives me 3a. I know if I add or subtract those, that definitely won't give me my 7a in the middle. So that means I cannot get either one of these over here to work with a combination of 2 and 3. So that means I should probably eliminate the 2 and 3 and try my 1 and 6. Now I told you the closest ones typically tend to work out more often, but that doesn't give you any guarantee. So let me try the other one. Again, keeping my common factor, let me try my 1a times my 6a. Let me start with my closest ones here, again, 2 and 5, but I cannot put 2 there, which means I have to put 5 there, and let me try 2 here. So my outside gives me a 5a, my inside gives me a 12a, and if I take a negative 12 plus 5, that gives me the middle term that I'm looking for of a negative 7a. So I find what gave me my 12, which is a 6 times 2, and make it negative. And I find what gave me my um, 5a, which is a 5 times a, so that gives me a positive there. Double check your last sign. Positive times negative does give me a negative. So that means everything should work out overall. So I have finally factored this guy completely. So I can box my answer and hand it in. Now, if you're not ever very confident with yourself, you can do this by checking it. So I would refoil these back out, distribute my 2a, and make sure you end up with the original problem that you had. All right, so we finished example three, so let's move over to example four. So we start in the same place. Is the order okay? And it is. It might look like a little funky at first, but it works out because my first variable of C is descending and my second variable of D is ascending. So remember, if we have two variables, that's the order we prefer it to be in, and that matches that. Look throughout if we have any common factor, and we do not which means we get to start this one by just setting up our parentheses and doing our trinomial. So factors of 81c to the fourth, we have lots of options. I'm going to start with the two factors that are closest together. So I have 9 times 9, and I'm going to have c squared times c squared, because if I add those up, that gives me c to the fourth. Now let me move on to my last terms here. Again, I have lots of choices to give me that, but I'm going to start with the ones that are closest together. So let me try 5d times 5d. So my outside gives me a 45c squared d, and my inside gives me a 45c squared d. And not only do my numbers work out to give me the 90 that I'm looking for, my variables also match. I have like terms to give me the variables that I'm working for. So sometimes the numbers might work out, but the variables don't. So you have to be very careful all the way around. 
Now I want positive. Positive here plus positive there gives me positive here. So I have a plus and a plus. So I have factored this by doing my trinomial process. But I can actually factor it farther. If I look at my two sets of parentheses overall, my binomials, notice that they are exactly the same. And whenever they are exactly the same, you can actually condense them farther to give you 9c squared plus 5d quantity squared. So those two identical factors squared. So if you ever can condense them, make sure you do that final step, because if you don't, then the homework will count that answer incorrect. All right, so we have worked through our last examples of factoring trinomials. So that means we get to move on to our next technique in the next video.